Hello everybody, welcome back to my RC Plane channel. I'm James, continuing on with this Balsa USA smoothie build. And in this video, I'm going to be connecting the aileron servos to the, to the ailerons. Now in the previous two videos, I connected the, the rudder and the elevator, and I also, and then the one before that, I connected the carburetor to the throttle servo. So those ones, check out those two previous videos if you're interested. So in this one, like I said, I'm moving on to the ailerons. So a couple of things about I'm going to be using here, some of my hardware, is I'm just going to be using these. These are just to bro um, solids. These are just metal uh, rods, and they're threaded on one side. I'm going to be using those for my actual control rods. And those are going to connect to the aileron using these little, I have a couple clevises. As you can see here. Oops, right there. And then I also have the control horn set that came with the kit, or that comes with the kit. And those are gonna get attached onto the aileron here. And then from my servo arms, or the servo control arms, I purchased these, these are longer. These are Futaba, what are these? These are Futaba, and the, there's not a model. FS, FSH-6E, and it's just a control horn, or a um, servo, servo horn. And I'm gonna cut one side off, but I got these because they're longer. And when I was kind of doing some checks with the with the servos which are in here, they the ones that came with the with the in the box weren't long enough. They just barely kind of stuck out. So I purchased these longer ones so it gives me a little bit more more of a more of a throw or basically a, a better connection. They'll be they'll be high enough now. Okay, or they'll extend outward enough. Okay, so that's that stuff. And then, oh, I'm going to be using these little Easy Link. These are Debro Easy Link connectors for the push rods. They just snap on. And I showed these in my previous two videos, but I thought I'd just bring them up again. These are, I really like these a lot. I've mentioned it before. These are just the Debro Easy Link for um, connecting to your control rods. So let me put this stuff back in this little box, get this out of the way. Okay, so the, the, the servos are already mounted on these little plates. Here's the right and here's the left. And then I like to mark on my wing. I do this a lot. I just kind of use a piece of tape and I, just to keep me keep me sort of um, oriented correctly. I got my left and my right um, located or marked out. And then again we're looking at the bottom of the wing. So um, yeah so we're looking at the wing upside down obviously. So here's these two guys here. And they're already hooked up and ready to go. In fact, let me try them out. There they go. May not be able to see them moving because they're black, but they are they are hooked up. Okay, I'm going to set my plane up using flaperons. And if you're not familiar with flaperons, just like the word sort of indicates, it's a combination between flaps and ailerons. And you have to have two servos in order to do that, um, one for each aileron. And then you also have to have the ability to mix it with your transmitter or with your radio system, which is actually pretty simple to do. It's just the setting that I have to choose. So basically what it is, if you're not familiar with the flapper on, is that it's a combination, again, it's a mixing, and allows you to have your traditional flap movement, I'm sorry, your traditional aileron movement, and then you also get a flap function that goes with it. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is hook up the servo arm on here. Now, as I mentioned, these ones are kind of long, or they are long. That's kind of why I got them. Well, that is why I got them. And there it is there. So let's go ahead and give it a little run here. And really what you want to do is you want to have your, your starting point should be to have your servo arm as perpendicular as possible to the actual kind of the axis, the long axis of the servo itself. But it's usually not, at least with the, with the Futaba ones, it's usually not perfect and I think that has to do with the fact that you have the little kind of like the gear like the teeth on the gears don't perfectly line up or they're just I don't know why they are that way but um, and what Futaba does is if you look closely and again I'm not sure how the other manufacturers do it but it's probably similar they put numbers on the servo arm and maybe you can see that there's a one on this one and there's a two on this one. That doesn't mean that there's one servo arm and two servo arms. That is an indicator. It tells you how many degrees off of being perpendicular, if that's the way to put it, that the servo arm is. So if I, when I put this servo arm on the, on the servo, 
it's not going to be at a perfect 90 degree angle to the long axis of the surface. It'll be off by one degree, so it'll be like 89 degrees. And this one is two, so that would be 88 degrees. And then I think that's how it works. And if you look at these bigger or these ones with more on it, they have one, two, three, four. And again, they're not numbering the arms. Those are telling you that there's going to be different angles. In fact, we can try it out. Put this one on right here. So that's about one. That's that's about one. Like I said, it's kind of measured relative to the long axis of the servo. And you put it on close as you can. That's one degree. So you can kind of see that's off. Maybe you can kind of pick that up. It's off just a little bit from being perfectly perpendicular. Hopefully you can kind of see that. But if I go to like, so if I choose three, it's going to be off further because I, I can't put it on. See how far it goes then? I don't have a lot of options. It goes that way or that way. So yeah, so one is going to be, if you put it on one, it should be the closest possible to being perpendicular like that. Now, you know, I don't know how helpful that is. And I think that's the way they work, but in any case, something to think about. Pull this off of here. Oops. Okay, so now I'm going to trim the other piece off of my servo arm that I'm not using. Carefully. I'm going to hold on to it so it doesn't fly across the room. There we go. I'll cut off these little pieces. Nothing too fancy there. Okay. And this is going to go on here now. Like that. And we'll set this back in here now. Okay, so now I'm going to screw the clevis onto the threaded rod. Let me get this on here. And again, I like to leave a little bit, like maybe an eighth of an inch or so, three sixteenths, something like that. Kind of thread it through a little further to uh, give myself a little bit of flexibility. I can move it back and forth. If, if I kind of sound a little bit weird, weirder than usual, I should say, is because there's sort of like a kind of an echo kind of coming off of the wing when I'm talking. I can kind of hear it. It's kind of weird. It's like I'm in a, it's almost like an echo chamber. So you may pick up sort of a strange sound when I talk, but that's what that is. Okay. So this is now hooked up. Let me grab a troll horn. And this guy's going to go right here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark the rod about where I need to put it. I'm going to screw this in a little more. Okay. That'll be a little bit more forgiving because what's going to happen is I'm going to just, I'm going to cut this and I'm going to put a bend in it. And once I do that, I can't make any adjustments on this side. So I want to make sure I have enough to play with and I can do that by making sure I have enough threaded, kind of the threaded section to work with. So. This guy will go right here. Let me get a pin. Okay, and again, like I mentioned before, you want your holes of the control horn aligned with the hinge line. Right about there. I'm gonna mark it right where the hole is. Like that. Okay, so now I gotta put a 90 degree angle in this. That's giving you a little more. Okay, like that. And then what I'll do, I'll 
put my dude on here. Let me drill this out here real quick. I forgot that I got to drill these guys out. They don't fit perfectly. Drill it out. Okay. That'll be like that. And then I'll just cut, leave a little bit, but not too much. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to get rid of that burr off the end there. Okay, if there's any doubt in your mind when you're using a Dremel or something like that, Proxon, that you need to wear safety glasses, like I'm wearing right now, um, you can. You may have seen there's a when I was doing that, there was a little kind of faint buildup of little tiny metal, kind of metal flakes. So always wear your safety gas glasses. This guy goes on here like that now. Go. So one thing I notice is that it's not, I'm going to put a little bit of a, kind of increase my bend a little bit in the end here. Because it was kind of kicking it over, so I just need to kind of get this over here a little bit more. Go. Okay. Okay, so now I have the arm on here and I can see that I'm gonna have to extend kind of finish that up, but I have to, I have to extend the clevis out a little bit further because you can probably tell maybe from, hopefully from the camera, but I'm a little bit too far in. So that's a good example of why I wanted to make sure that this, that I had enough to work with with that threaded rod. So I can open this up a little bit. I think probably that would be good, Jimmy. A little more. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of going to the end of my wing down there and I'm looking back this way and I'm trying to line up the holes along the hinge line and I'm also looking down because I have that little, there's like that little kind of stud sticking out that hooks into the um, control horn and I can look view down on top of that and that, that helps me line it up also. So again, it doesn't have to be perfect but I want it close. Okay, so I think I'm good here. Now I'm going to go ahead and drill this guy on here. Drill the holes for it. And again, what happens is as you, when you drill through it, you'll pop through the wood and then you'll push up against the monocoat. And I don't want to kind of tear it or whatever, so I'm going to poke a little hole using a pin and that'll help me kind of get that cut through the monocoat. There we go. Just like that. Then I'll throw a little bolt in there to keep it lined up. And with the next one, Do 
Get it. All right, so now I'll pull this out of here and we will give it our CA treatment. Let me see if I can pull this out with my... All right, we'll let this cure and we'll come back to it. Okay, so let's put this in. Now, of course, what happens with the CA, that strengthens the wood, but it also kind of fills that hole a little bit. So the screws don't go in smooth, smoothly after I do the CA, I'll drill them out again. And just get them to kind of just pop out now I'm going to get the back plate. And as I mentioned before, I like to kind of screw screw this in. Oops, there it goes. And kind of get it threaded before I try to put it on the actual plane. It kind of helps a little bit. You don't have to do it, but I like to do that. Kind of taps it for you. Okay, so let me go ahead and attach this plate. Feel it down here. Oops, you're not going to like that, are you? The reason I dis disconnected that is because I, I'm going to be kind of doing this. You know, I'm trying to get this on here. I don't want to be putting a lot of stress on the, on the servo. Let's go right underneath here. Okay, and you want it snug but not over tight. You don't want to crush, you don't want to crimp your control surface. Put this dude back on. And now, now I'll do this guy over here. Okay, so now the ailerons are all hooked up and ready to go. I have tape on the plates. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna screw down the plates until I get everything dialed in, and I'm not gonna put the I'm not gonna screw the servo arms on yet. And as I mentioned, I may put a little bit of Loctite on these threaded um, where, the, where the clevises are, but I'm not worried about that really because it can't really unscrew because it's connected to the to the control horn. So let's go ahead and give it a quick little test run. Remember, this is the bottom of the plane. I mean, the bottom of the wing, not the top of the wing. So here's my ailerons. And then because I have the flapper on um, chosen, I'm going to be able to use my the center knob for my flap control, which is like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over and we'll take a look at it from the top side. Okay, now it's oriented, obviously, uh, looking down on the wing. And here come the ailerons. And then the 
flaps. And again, set the flaps. Still can use the ailerons. Now one thing, if you look at these screws for these little control horn plates, they're sticking out pretty far. So I'm gonna go ahead and lop those off and kind of clean them up. All right, well, there we go. The ailerons are now hooked up. I should say, actually, the flapperons are now hooked up. Everything's good to go. And I will have to dial everything. I'll have to check all my settings, and I'm going to check my throws and everything. And I'll do that for all the other control surfaces also. But, yeah, so right now it's it's pretty pretty darn, darn close. So my next video on this is I'm going to put everything together. I'm going to assemble the entire plane, and I'm going to get the, the spinner and the prop on and that type of thing, and I'm going to check the balance hopefully the balance won't be off if it is i'll have to make some adjustments but we'll we'll cross that bridge when we when we get there and then i like to check the the wing loading and not much i can do about it just it is what it is the plane the plane's weight is pretty much where it's going to be but yeah i do like to check the wing loading and yeah so we're getting getting really really close to finishing this thing up and man i can't wait it's been a long haul i really appreciate everybody kind of tagging along with me on this build i'm not done yet but it's getting darn close Okay, well, thanks again for watching my channel. I really appreciate it, and we will see you next time.